So I've done a little bit of work to the lack without you guys. Creepy creeper noises. This is how I like to do my parcels. As much as I can possibly get to. And this one I'm going to do even more on the inside. And also my Cadillac was made 913 of 95. So we're back from the car show. I had fun. Yeah, I made some progress on the Cadillac beforehand, before going down there. Uh, it was on a day where I come home from work and I just kind of felt like working on it. So I was like, I'm gonna work on it. Uh, as you guys seen, I cleaned the frame, started making some templates, cut some metal out, started welding metal in. Things were going great. I was getting, I got everything tacked up. I was really ready to burn stuff in. Then I run out of wire. Boo! Story of my life. Probably something. So, put it on hold till after we come back from the trip. Uh, one, I want to make sure I had enough money to go down there uh, and come back. You know, coming back was a man thing. That would be kind of crappy to be stuck down there. But, uh, that's all done and through. And, uh, like I said, we had fun. And, totally motivated to get back working on the cars. I was kind of not feeling it there for a while. Plus, it was just really bad weather. But, we still got the bad weather. But I'm going to work in the shop today, so I'm not really too worried about that. I did go drive through the rain to go get some welding wire. Ew. Yeah, this thing's disgusting. But that's what happens when you drive in the rain. At least for me it is. I don't know how the back wheels stay so dirty and the front wheels stay so clean. This is right of the back down too much. So we should have everything we need to get started. And make a good bit of progress. Um, probably just do a parcel on the car today. Burning the driver's side. Um, still got to cut the pieces out for the passenger side. But that went pretty smooth uh, for the first go around. Templates fit good. I was happy with them. So. I guess I'm going to get started on that. Wimpy, wimpy, wimpy. Hefty, hefty, hefty. Yay. For those of you guys that... Do your own work and weld. Uh, here's a little something a buddy of mine showed me years ago. It's basically like a little Brillo pad. Um, it, it's bought like this. It's just like a round piece of Brillo pad. It clamps over the wire. You got a little metal clip there that holds it on. Basically just cleans your wire as it goes through. Um, a lot of times if you know if your welder sits up for a while, you get a little bit of rust on there, which isn't good. You don't want that. Uh, that thing will clean it off before it goes through your uh, liner. It messes your liner all up. Uh, I've got the habit where I spray just a little bit of WD-40 on there when I put a new roll of wire on there. That way it kind of lubricates my liner, and I've never had a problem out of it so far. Uh, you can get it probably any welding supply. I need to get another one because this one's kind of getting where it's falling apart, but I just don't think about it when I go to buy wire. So it'll be a little while before I have to buy a roll of wire. Um, just for you guys wondering... When I built the Caprice, I burned through a roll of wire this size. Uh, it was roughly about 50, well, it was 70 bucks with tax. Um, so that's about what it'll cost to do a parcel on a car, just in wire. So I'm gonna try and finish burning in the rest of this. I got it pretty well welded in. Just got a few spots left. Nothing to it but to do. It. Burn myself up. Yeah, that's why I stopped a little early. The last time I was welding on the bottom, I had a pretty big grease fire inside the frame. Uh, this time I stopped like half an inch away from the end of the frame. Matter of fact, it's still burning. So yeah, I was welding away. And, you know, usually if I'm on fire, I'm good. I'll, I'll weld to, or I'll keep welding to the end. But when my car is on fire, that's a little bit different story. Now that's out of it. All the top is done. Now I got to weld right up here. 
So we'll get to that. And uh, then all I got is a little bit of the bottom. And right up here, I got clean. I cleaned it beforehand, but of course I didn't clean far enough. I should have not been lazy and just threw my template up there and seeing where my plate ended, but I didn't. I just guessed. And I cleaned right here instead of right there. But it ain't a big deal. Uh, I got a demo, uh, not a demo, got a Dremel air grinder. I'll just stick it up there, clean it up, burn it in. Less talk, more work. So I like to try and weld up as far as I can. As you can see, I just got done welding it, obviously. I had one little bad spot there. Really should have cleaned it a little bit better. I thought I'd clean it better, but I guess I did not. Uh, but that's most of the uh, battle there. Just make sure you clean your metal really good. You can get in here. It's a little bit of a pain, but you know, I just kind of stick my gun right in there, lean it on the body, kind of close one eye and squint through the other, lean my head against the frame, you know, I get to see half of the puddle, but it can be done. That's how I like to do it, you know. More more strength, you know, than most people can get. And that's kind of the name of the game, trying to get as much as you can. And that's the front of the arch right there. I almost got it just clean. I'm going to come back a little bit further just to make sure. You know, try and give myself the best chance I can. It is an awkward place to weld, but it can be done. I just... I'll stick my nozzle up there. I actually put my nozzle a little bit of an angle and just run it downhill. Yes, downhill wells aren't as strong as uphill wells, but for what we're doing, I think it'll be all right. It hasn't failed me in the 20 years I've been doing it, so I think it'll be okay. All right, got it cleaned up as good as we can get in there. That's what I used. If it'll focus. Whoop. That's what I used. Just cram it in there, hope and pray, pull the trigger. Turned out all right. All right, this is one of those instances where one of these things you do all the time, you can do it pretty decently. Now that somebody's watching, it probably turns out like crap. But we'll see how it goes. That way at least you guys will have an idea how to get in here and get to it. Maybe. Now you do have to use a pretty good bit of stick out. That way you can kind of sort of see what you're doing. But there she is. And if you're wondering why this is hung out way below the frame, it's because I'm gonna plate the bottom of the frame too. I wanted to be able to tie into it. I probably cut that maybe a little bit too much. But I can always cut more out. It's harder to add metal. But I gotta finish burning in the bottom. I had some problems with my damn welder when I first started out. Uh, Turned out my tip was loose. I never really had that problem before. I tied it down with a pair of pliers. But after then, it started burning good. But it just acted really weird. I don't know if it was the wire or what. So we're going to finish burning in these little spots here. And then probably hop over to the other side and start plating the inside. Got my template right there. I had it up there before. It fit pretty good. I was happy with it. So we'll keep on keeping on. All right, we got the boogers ground out of there. That's the beautiful thing about welding. If you mess up. Grind it out, try again. All right, let's see if we can do this without completely burning ourselves. Just a little bit. All 
For this spot right here, it's kind of hard to tell on camera, uh, it pokes out, just to add it and give it more strength. Uh, I was going to cut it out because I'm going to plate this area, but I decided just to knock it in with a hammer. Uh, these frames really aren't that strong. You know, a few blows from a hammer, you can knock it out. That's what it looked like before. There you, go, you can kind of see how it pops out. I just knocked it in. So now I can lay my spring. You can see. So now I'm going to lay my template up in here and weld it in. Now I got it pretty well clamped in. As you can see, there's no shortage of clamps. You can move the world with a clamp. Well, with multiple clamps at least. But I got it pretty well where I like it. Left me some room up there. It's kind of hard to get your MIG wand up there. So you're going to leave a little bit of room. Like I said, I'm going to leave a little bit of room on the bottom here. Where my plate on the bottom of the frame can catch that. The only thing I'm not happy with, I wish it would have went up a little bit higher right there. Which I might make a filler plate to go in there. Uh, really, my bridge will probably hang down right about here, so it'll probably be alright. Actually, I got a little sample piece that'll hold up there to see if it fits good. If not, I'll put a filler plate in there. Um, got that all pretty good. Pull a clamp to pull this in. I'm going to start tacking the bottom and the top up here because it's all fit good. And then I'm going to burn it in. As I said, you'd be surprised what you can move with some clamps. Had a problem with a gap up there. Got another clamp put on there, tightened both equally, you know, one after the other. Got it all closed up. I mean, you don't have to have the best clamps in the world. Yes, that is a very, very good clamp. But, as you can see, that's a Harbor Freight clamp. That's a Harbor Freight clamp. And as you can see, it is bent. But these clamps have bent through some stuff. You can see I got welds on them. Uh, when I was wrapping the frame on the Cadillac, I was having a problem with the clamp popping off. I was trying to do the front. Cheap clamp. It's like seven bucks, maybe 14 bucks. I'm thinking 14 because I think I bought them both at the same time. But it's cheap. You can throw it out. It ain't going to hurt your feelings. I welded it to the frame of the car so it stopped popping off. You know, got me through the job, made life easy. Would I want a clamp to this one? No. This is like a $50 clamp. I don't really want to weld to it. Granted, I will and I have on my other one. But this one's also a lot stronger. So you kind of pay, you get what you pay for, you know, but the strength of this one can move. You can buy two or three clamps and move the same thing with that. It'll just take you longer. So you don't have to have the best of everything. But it sure helps. Here's another good reason to have an arsenal of clamps. I was going to put my big clamp in there, but it kind of gets in the way of everything. So good old cheap Harbor Freight clamp comes to the rescue. Get it clamped up there. I got it good and tight. Uh, another thing, don't be afraid of using heat. Don't be afraid of using a hammer. Um, back in the day, you know, I lay it low. I don't know how many of you guys watched that or, you know, got on there. But, you know, everybody would talk about, oh, using a hammer, using heat to bend metal. Well, when you weld it, it heats up. When you cut it, it heats up. Yeah, you don't want to go where it's glowing red where you can just move it, you know, by blowing on it. You know, yeah, that does make it weaker, but you're going to be welding on it. It's warm. Use that to your advantage. You know, right here, I had a little bit of a gap. I welded, welded up there. I welded there just a little bit. It was warm. You know, I grabbed the hammer, tapped it in. Do you see a bunch of hammer marks? No, you don't. Just hit it in the corner. You know, you ain't got to totally kill it. Once it's heated up, it'll move pretty good. So don't be afraid to use a hammer. You know, I mean, you don't want to knock the hell out of it, but you can usually make it do what you want pretty easily once you get a little bit of heat in there. For those of you that are thinking about powder coating as an alternative, I did these about 10 years ago, maybe a little bit longer. And they're in pretty good shape. You know, I wiped that off with a paper towel and a little bit of W40. Didn't really go too hard on it. Uh, right there is where the cup rides on. It's pretty durable stuff. Uh, I did that at home. I had a little Harbor Freight gun. I had an oven that I found off of Craigslist. Sprayed it, threw it in there, clear coated it. As you can tell, I ain't the best powder coater in the world. It'll focus. There we go. I mean, the springs are pretty textured themselves. But I just laid it to it, threw it in the oven. 
Turned out pretty good. You remember earlier when I was saying a cheap clamp can be a good clamp because you can weld to it. Well, that's what I had to do on this one. It wasn't the easiest getting that band I welded the cheaper one to the frame. Kind of got the band in there, but couldn't quite get it closed good enough. So I used my bigger clamp on top of my smaller clamp. I kept wanting to pull back that way. So I used my cheap clamp to brace my good clamp and pulled it all in. Sometimes you just have to think outside of the box. About got it all burned in. This is under the trunk, right in front of the bumper. Tie it in there. And she'll be done. Well, for the sides at least. Still got to do the bottoms. But of course, I ran out of metal. So I got everything from back bumper all the way up to under the back door. It's in there. Still got to finish right up there. But if you haven't wondered by now how long I'm going to keep them cylinders in there, I managed to work around them just because I really didn't feel like getting in the trunk. So I found a better way. I mean, how lazy can you get? <laughs> uh, I didn't have such luck on this side. I tried, trust me, that's why it's all kicked at an angle. I think the hose is actually zip tied, so that's why it won't come down this way. But that cylinder, definitely coming out from the bottom. I also showed this uh, little piece of advice in one of the other videos, but just in case you haven't watched that video, uh, you know, use leverage to your advantage a lot of times, you know. Use a wrench to your advantage. See right there? It's kind of hard to get to. But if you flip her around, I might have to do it that way. Yeah, you can just squeeze it with one hand, check this out. Boom. Loose. I'm getting loose. And the hose is coming with me. Yeah. You know, so if you get in a bad spot where you can't get both hands in there, usually a trunk. Just do that. Use a cylinder as leverage. That easy. Make life simple on you. So close. That's what's holding me up. Don't judge me. Like I said, sometimes you gotta think outside the box. Or it should be really lazy and come up with other ideas. Well, this is where I'm at in the video. Got a pretty good bit done. I'm gonna continue to get more done. Probably won't take you long for some of the stuff because it's kind of covered in other videos. I want to do the Caprice, um, you know, as far as the bridge and all that good stuff. Uh, no, really no sense in repeating it over again, at least for a few more videos. Uh, that way, new people that subscribe to the channel, they can kind of see without having to research through all the videos, I guess. I don't know. We'll see. And in the near future, we'll see how it goes. I mean, but other than that, you know, she's coming together, which is a good thing. It's coming together in decent speed. I've been working on it pretty much every day. I uh, got a lot more done than I thought I would in the last few days. So that's good. Everything went smooth. You know, it kind of fit right into place. Didn't really have to fight anything any worse than what I thought I would. Other than that, uh, hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, uh, share it, tell your friends, tell your dog, tell your cat, tell them all. Until then, we'll see you. Appreciate it. <laughs> Good shot. Got away free. It lives to die another day. <laughs> <laughs>